Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in an yuhayikum bi ismi Yasu' al-Masih, Ibn Baladi wa Mukhallisi wa Rabbi. I greet you in the name of Jesus, the Christ, the man from my hometown, my Lord and Savior. The Quran or the Bible, which is God's word. Now, to our topic, the Quran or the Bible, which is God's word, both of us, Christians and Muslims, face a rising tide of atheism, humanism, secularism, and materialism throughout the global village of over five billion people. There is a staggering amount of confusion concerning the doctrine of God, which is sweeping our planet. We must, we should, we need to bolster the faith of those who believe and put their trust in the revealed word of God. At this crucial period in history, large Christian and Muslim communities in some areas of the world, such as Russia and China, are placed under severe pressure to surrender their faith. Together, as Christians and Muslims, we must stand and insist upon the absolute validity of the Ten Commandments and the high moral standards revealed in our scripture in contradistinction to what the above-mentioned philosophies seek to enforce upon us. While in mainland China a few years ago, with my associate Mr. Sparks, who is with us this evening, I was urged by our true leader, who had been born in China from missionary parents, if the Chinese ask you, don't tell them that the West is more advanced than they are. Amazed and amused, I inquired, would that not be considered dishonesty? The reply was, no. Why not, I persisted. Because we do not want them to get upset and feel badly since they are convinced they are the most advanced society in the whole world. May I ask you, what is your reaction to such a situation? How long can you keep the bright sunshine from the eyes of the beholder? He that must blindfold himself forever or go into a cave and live there denying there is anything but darkness in this world. No, no, no. The time has come to lift the blindfolds of millions of eyes. God commanded on the first day of creation, let there be light, and there was light. Therefore, to answer the very serious question, the Quran or the Bible, which is God's word, I will reply emphatically with a yes and a no. Yes, the Quran is, and no, the Quran is not God's word. Bear in mind, please, I am an honest seeker, seeking fact, not fiction, researching for truth, not lies, attempting to find the right path, not the wrong one. My dissertation for the Doctor of Philosophy degree, earned only three weeks ago, is entitled Understanding Islam. I want to understand and know more about the Quran, the Prophet of Arabia and Islam, the religion of most of my Arab people. I say most because as of last year, Swimmer Institute give me statistics indicating there are 174 million Arabs, 14 million of them claim the Christian faith. I have tried to be objective in my research, careful, earnest, and many times spending time in fasting and prayer, believe me. Now I present you with my findings. It is my hope you have come with open, not closed minds, with genuine desire to seek truth, not surface interest. Some of my findings will not be very pleasing to you. They were not to me either. It is very possible that your traditional faith will be shaken in few minutes and your intellect challenged. What I'm about to present to you, I present as truth in love, not hate. The material is offered to instruct you, not to insult you. We want to analyze, probe, examine, and investigate our topic thoroughly. Yet, if you fear becoming irrational 
as some of you have been jumping up and down, rather than stay rational. My advice to you, please, stand up and leave us now. However, before you make such a decision, let me remind you that you will have one solid hour of participation during the question and answer period. Take notes, write your questions, and we'll try to answer them. We are holding neither a boxing match here nor a circus. You can go to the cinema or theater if you want to be entertained rather than disrupt the scholarly and historic discussion. Mr. Didat and I invite you, please vacate the premises and leave us alone in peace. The Sunday Express has a motto which I saw from the room of my hotel on the billboard. It says, when everything fails, men use their brains. Yours truly is a peaceful man. Even the name of my first son is called Salam, which makes me Abu Salam in Arabic. Back to our Chinese story. Since 1976, China has opened its doors to the outside world, and the Chinese are convinced now that there are other nations who are socially, scientifically, and technologically more advanced than they. To use their own popular saying, China has finally stood up. In other words, China is seeking to catch up with the rest of the advanced world. Even the Soviet Union are now excited about glasnost, openness, and perestroika restructuring after decades of suppression. Thanks to Mr. Gorbachev. Stalin is now recognized for what he was, a murderer of 20 million of his own people. Now, the Muslim world has been convinced for centuries that their religion is the best and the Quran is the last testament. If this is true, not fiction, authentic documents, not borrowed truths mixed with tales, why then are Muslim governments so terrified of the freedom of religion? This freedom is available to citizens of every industrialized and Christianized country, but denied in theirs. Why did the United Arab Emirates last week in Sharjah deny me interest to preach in a church there for the past week? Mr. Didat, to my knowledge, has never been denied entry to any Christianized or industrialized country in the world. Why have they built a formidable wall around their borders mightier than the wall of China and the Berlin Wall? Why is a human being denied citizenship in Saudi Arabia if he is not a Muslim? We know of the Iron Curtain, Bamboo Curtain, but few seem to recognize the Muslim Curtain. Why do women and children fare so poorly in most, thank God, not all Muslim countries? Discrimination and prejudice are constantly the targets of the preaching of Islamic sheikhs and mullahs, but not practice. If truth is superior to a falsehood, then the only fear one should experience is fear itself. If Muslims actually feel something about these matters, I would like to suggest they look into the truth that we are about to share with you. Anyway, I have a dream. I have a dream. A dream when the close nations of the world will open their doors to the fresh wind of freedom of religion. Yes, freedom as Christ Jesus proclaimed, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. John 8, 36. Yes, I have a dream. A dream when men and women, boys and girls of all tongues and tribes, races and places can make the choice accepting or rejecting the revelation of God in Christ Jesus and not be stuck from their birth to their death with Islam, Christianity, or any other religion. I believe if they accept Christ, please note, I did not say Christianity or the Christian religion. They can learn to love God above all else and through his Holy Spirit, they can love and forgive one another and live in peace. Across the centuries of human history, we have had many revolutions, 